I call the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Um, Mr Speaker, can I commend the Minister on his contribution to the House and also for the legislation that he's presenting um, to us. Labor is very happy to support this legislation to the Select Committee. Um, we'll see how we go after that, but um, certainly the intention of the legislation is, um, you know, is, is admirable and it's something that is necessary and it's a, a, it, should it be shown at the Select Committee to be able to deliver those objectives, we will certainly support further progress of it. I want to just take a step back, um, Mr Speaker, in terms of the gambling regulation and regime that we've got in place before us. Um, when we were in government in the 2002 to 2005 period, Labor led the government then, and we introduced a major piece of gambling legislation which really set, um, for, for the first time in over 20 years, some fundamental objectives of um, the regulatory regime, but also recognising the changes that have um, taken place over years in terms of gambling. This, this legislation doesn't really confront that. Uh, I haven't got the answers to that, actually, and I'll be happy to admit that, but I'll be certainly very happy to be part of the solution. I think there are challenges in terms of access to um, you know, wor worldwide gambling institutions that we haven't been able to um, regulate satisfactorily. I suppose before we did that, though, we, wa we might want to consider what harm is being done and then we'd have a better idea of the scale of the problem that we might need to face if, if indeed we do have a problem. So the legislation that was introduced in 2003 um, introduced major reforms. We had a moratorium on casinos. Of course, that's been um, in debate over the last couple of years in relation to Sky City. We had a reduction in the number of Class 4 uh, gaming machines in new venues, and we had a significant shift in focus. The, the, gambling regulatory regime, the debates in this House were much more about the minimisation of gambling associated harm. So the public health recognition of gambling um, finally came to fruition in the debates in Parliament. So when those changes um, became fully operational in, in July 2004, that was really a huge step for the New Zealand Parliament and I want to commend the people behind that consideration and also those who contributed to the, to the debate at that time. It's very interesting to read the debate in the 2003-04 period and see how, mu how much things have advanced o over just, just a decade. And probably that would alert our parliament to how we need to keep on our toes in this regard. I think the minister um, probably is um, ensuring that parliament keeps on its toes, given that we've got two gambling bills before parliament at the moment. We've been debating um, gambling, the gambling amendment bill number two earlier um, in this session of the House. Uh, now we've got Gambling Amendment Bill Number 3, and it does puzzle me as to why we couldn't have waited until the Number 2 bill was concluded. It hasn't... It was just only, only a matter of another few hours to go um, before the Third Amendment Bill came through. And it does raise the question, I guess, um, about whether there is consistency in the, in the portfolio in terms of a strategic look at the entire industry. It has been a little ad hoc. I know that some of the changes that have come about were the result of the um, national government slashing Te Urua Flavel's members bill. He had a, a very um, comprehensive members bill that he'd introduced, um, but unfortunately he got hijacked by the government who refused to support it unless he made substantial changes to it. And I think that we lost an opportunity really to stand up to some of the lack of transparency in the industry. It wasn't um, entirely of my um, making in terms of the, the bill. I wouldn't have supported every piece of it, but I certainly was disappointed that it was watered down to the extent it was. So the aim of this bill is to provide greater transparency, and that's certainly needed. Um, the, the minister um, gave one example of cost um, but retaining transparency or perhaps even enhancing it by using the example of the full page ad in the paper that we've seen, all of us will have seen it, probably very few of us will have read it, electorate MPs tend to read those things with a little more care than perhaps other members of the public because we're interested in what organisations in our electorates have received uh, any funding and, and then we're able to link in with what activity they're going to use it for. Um, but, he, but the Minister noted that that information could now, for example, be available on a website. And uh, I'll just raise a note of caution. I think and the theory sounds great, 
but actually how many people would, would think to look at a website unless they were triggered by a particular occurrence. Whereas when we look through the newspaper, we see a full page ad. We don't think to look for it, we just turn the page and there it is. So sometimes having a change in the way that information is made available doesn't always have the same sort of transparency. So I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just raising that as one of the cautions that I'd like the select committee to consider. Certainly the point at improving transparency um, we, would, um, we would support. This is particularly around the grant making, which I just referred to in, in terms of the full page ad. The, the grants are from the class four gaming machines, which are the non-casino gaming machines, so the pokies that are in clubs or pubs or bars, um, not, not the casino ones. So this is about the transparency and the grants that the pokey machine money is given into the community. Um, we've also got in the legislation to try and reduce the potential conflict of interest situations. Um, certainly when we were debating Tudora Flavel's bill at the Select Committee, um, that was a big concern. I don't think that there is enough recognition of potential conflict of interest and declaration in the industry. So improving that in the legislation is certainly something we'd support. Um, improving transparency surrounding the management companies that provide the societies with service. So the contract negotiation um, with venues is one such example. Um, I'm not aware of any particular issue that has been raised that has caused this to be addressed in the legislation, but I'm sure the officials or submitters will give us a bit more clarity around why that, um, why the lack of transparency or apparent lack of transparency has caused any concern. Uh, simplifying the compliance cost and reducing costs for society and venue owners, how could you argue, how could anyone, not you, Mr Speaker, I'm sure you wouldn't argue against um, reducing compliance costs or complexities, um, but we have to make sure that the accountability for those organisations is not reduced by any reduction in compliance, but certainly the principle would be strongly supported. And as the Minister mentioned, ensuring the efficiency of the appeals process um, isn't undermined. So those, those are some of the, um, the key points of the legislation. As I said, Mr Speaker, we have two gambling bills um, going through Parliament at the moment, both of which I think would be quite widely supported by the community, who are increasingly recognised gambling as a public health issue, one that you don't clamp down on to try and um, stop, but you do have a regulatory regime that protects our citizens from harm. That's the importance of it. And also making sure that a significant amount of money isn't used or abused. That's, that's a responsibility of this parliament as well. It does bring into sharp contrast um, having a debate as open as this and obviously going through a proper select committee process soon, it does bring it into sharp contrast with the way the Sky City legislation was rammed through um, Parliament where basically uh, John Key, probably Stephen Joyce, did a, did a dirty deal with Sky City, uh, enabled them to break the agreement of the Auckland City Council in terms of reducing the number of pokies, huge number of, um, a huge increase in the number of pokies in Sky City in Auckland um, and, a, and a convention centre that will be able to be used by the public. Um, it was sold to, to New Zealand by the Prime Minister as us getting a convention centre for free. There was no regard to the democratic process that, that Auckland City went through in terms of determining um, the limit of pokies in their community. That's something that is their right and it was undermined by um, the deal that John Key did, let alone the actual harm that is done by pokies. That's why we had a commitment by this parliament in earlier gambling legislation to reduce the number of um, pokey machines. So the, the deal that John Key did went straight against that. I, I, I noticed the minister who's, who's got his name on this bill didn't comment on that, but I've seen his writing on this subject and he seemed to be singularly unimpressed uh, at the time with the deal that had been done by John Key with Sky City. He wrote that it wasn't particularly, he wrote some unfavourable comments about it, um, but I'm pretty sure that when he came into the House he was supportive of the deal. So I, I was puzzled by, you know, what happened between one statement and another. The minister's looking puzzled now. Did he not support the Sky City deal? <coughs> yes, he did. That's right. 
and he did say that it wasn't a great deal, it was a dodgy deal. I'm happy to refer him, um, well, I could probably table the comments he made if he wants, um, but there was an inconsistency there. It's always a puzzle to me and to others on this side of the House when, when members of Parliament make a comment about an issue and say one thing, and then when it comes to voting, they do another. Um, Mr Speaker, I am pleased that we're debating this legislation. I think that it's a step in the right direction. Again, I commend the Minister for bringing it to the House, and I look forward to the debate at the Select Committee.